this is my prediction of where I think RAG will be headed in the next six months. But before we do that, let me talk a little bit about, about agents. Last year, agents were the shit. And what ended up happening was that a lot of companies adapted the agents work that didn't really work well in production to workflows. And I'm going to make a prediction right now that in the next six months, in the next eight months, we are going to stop seeing RAG agents as question answering systems, but more in the form of report generation systems. And I'm going to explain this by really talking about what I've learned as a consultant, how I understand value, and then also how I think companies should be describing the value they deliver through RAG. All right. So why does RAG suck and why are reports better? The simple answer is that RAG sucked because when you do RAG, the value you derive is time saved from finding the answer. And it's really hard to sell anything above that. Whereas when you sell, the report is now a decision-making tool that allows you to allocate your resources. Here's an example. I might just pay an employee $50 an hour. And if they have a question they need to answer, they can use some kind of like RAG app. But when a private equity firm wants to acquire a company, what they hire people to do is to do interviews, but the deliverable is a report. So right there, when you think of RAG, you're saving the minutes or hours a week of an employee that pays $50 an hour compared to a report that might cost $20,000 to generate. So right there, the value is communicated differently, even though a report is basically a RAG app in a for loop. And in particular, it is a pre-computed RAG API call. If RAG is a search box, reports are just many search boxes, right? Just question, answer, question, answer, question, answer, question, answer with some opinionated format. Okay, so the first things first. RAG is evaluated on percentages of wages. Reports are basically percentages of higher leverage outcomes like decision making, right? For example, another one, aside from the private equity one, it would be on hiring. If I had a interview can a candidate come into an interview process and do six interviews. It's unclear what I would do with a RAG app over the six calls. Do I just start asking questions? Like, Is this a good candidate? Who, who, who knows? But if you did this instead, if you had a really well-defined template that your organization makes hiring decisions on, did they portray certain values? Are they independent? Have they worked in teams before? That template is pretty well known. And if you just had a service that took all the interview meetings and generated a report and this report is something that the hiring committee needs to review and align on before they do the 15-minute debrief. Now, the, the value you lever off of that is a function of the decision-making and the capital you allocate to hire that person. The recruiter charges like $40,000 for a candidate that makes a quarter million dollars. And so the value you describe there around building a recruiting app, re building out these recruiting templates is much higher than just offering question answering over question answering over like a bunch of call transcripts like i don't really know what the outcome of that is but i know that if the report that is generated is high quality is going to make my decision making easier it might be able to catch things that you know maybe no one really noticed where were the red flags that nobody noticed at our company we have five values did the questions and answers they they process in this call did they address the values of our company where there are moments of low integrity, where there are moments of high integrity. The system is now standardized in a way that the template or the report, it can be generated from the data. And again, this is RAG. This is just RAG in a for loop because the questions are well-defined and now we have well-defined metrics against those questions. Okay, so now it's like, great. I am much more willing to pay for someone to generate a report because the report's upside is the decision rather than the time saved of an employee, like a wage employee. The second thing I realized through my consulting is that how you write that report is incredibly important. And the reason is because people who are operating companies, the way you scale your decision making and the way you scale your processes is called, one of them is at least, it's called the SOP, the Standard Operating Procedure. When I am going to workshops, when I am getting coaching, when I am uh, buying business books, the outcomes that I derive from these things is standard operating procedures, right? I learned a way of writing sales engagement letters that was higher conversion. Now I want all of my meetings to fit in that format. There are ways that people are taught to give feedback. And when you, if you put that feedback into this form, you get better outcomes. And so not only is the report generation important, being able to pay for the right template is actually incredibly useful. Because 
If I learn to write a better stand-up, the SOP is making sure that you're asking questions that are relevant. If you are doing a product review meeting, the SOP is around decision making, blockers, et cetera, et cetera. Again, not only is the report generation way more valuable than the question answering of the wage worker, what report you use is incredibly valuable too. And I think those are the two things that we will be possible in the future. Effectively, one, marketplaces of report generating tools and the ability to generate these complex systems. And two, being able to effectively find what the right template is, right? You could have a marketplace of templates or you can have good models generate these templates. More often than not, I think the very opinionated route is the way to go. I have spent six hours reading a book that costs $40 to basically figure out what the right template is to do an engagement letter. And this engagement letter makes me tens of thousands of dollars and eventually hundreds of thousands of dollars. Could I have done it before? Yes, but it made me do it easier. It made me do it faster. And again, this is the evidence that I get for understanding what the value of that template was. And now when I do these sales meetings, I don't really care if I can chat with my transcript. What I care is I can take that call and turn it into the formats and reports that I value because I know that these things drive business outcomes rather than just save me time because I forgot when someone when something is due or what something is up, right? When someone calls me and asks for advice, I don't want them to have to go and chat with their transcript. I want the AI to generate memos for me that are saved somewhere where the memos are have clear deliverables and say, okay, this is the objective. This is why we make the decision. These are some follow-ups, et cetera, et cetera. And to, again, to summarize, I think that question answering and RAG systems are probably going to be pretty unopinionated and not very useful. Whereas if you go in the world of report generation, you start addressing the value of not only question answering, but addressing the value of decision making. And when you have these reports, having a marketplace of templates can help you figure out how to drive the most value. Because understanding what the template is, defining the SOP is a skill in and of itself. And these are the skills that people take workshops on. It's the thing that people get coaches on and, and things that people buy books on. What are the standard procedures that I can adopt in my business, in my life, to drive better outcomes and better decisions? And none of this starts with an uneducated user posing the first question. That's all.